Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the regularly scheduled Taft City Council Successor Agency amended meeting for March the 20th, 2018, as a courtesy to all, if you have one of these, who does it, every <coughs> second grader in the world does, please put it on vibrate or silence it so it doesn't bother any of us. Any writings or documents provided to a majority of the city council regarding any item on this agenda are made available for public inspection in the lobby at city, city Hall, 209 East Kern Street, Taft, California, during normal business hours because of Senate Bill 343. We're going to begin this evening's meeting, and I am going to go ahead and lead the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would join me, followed by an invocation from Bob Jordan. Is Bob here? No, Heather's here. We're going to have Heather Mueller pitch it for him, if you would, please. If you would stand, salute and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we come together this night as members of the Taft community who care very much about this place where we live. We thank you for the energy and the time and the skill and the competency that is gathered so that we can make the decision that you would have us make as we go forward from this time. We thank you for the rain, and we thank you most of all for your presence, your spirit, as it winds around us and through us, over and under us, and guides us into the new place of decision-making and honoring you with our words, our thoughts, our actions, and our prayers. We thank you and we praise you in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Madam Clerk, may we have a roll call, please? Mayor Knorr. Here. Mayor Pro Tim Hill. Here. Council Member Bryant. Here. Council Member Cryer. Here. Council Member Miller. Here. All right, first item on this evening's agenda is a public hearing for Transit Sunday service. The recommendation is to conduct a public hearing and then approve the elimination of Taft Area Transit Sunday service effective April 1st. City Manager Jones. Thank you, Mayor. This is um, something that we don't look forward to doing, but it's something that we have to do to reduce our operating costs to continue the funding for Taft Area Transit. This is a uh, second reading to eliminate the Sunday service. All right, thank you very much, sir. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and open a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience wishing to speak on behalf of this item? Anybody wishing to speak in opposition of this item? Seeing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing. At this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the elimination of the Taft Area Transit Sunday service effective April the 1st, 2018. Motion. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, Councilman Miller, you made that motion. We have to meet the 10% fare box budget on the transit, and we're not doing it. And so, like uh, City Manager Craig said, we have to reduce our costs some way or another, and this, unfortunately, is one of those cost savings that we have to do. We're at 8.23. is Getting close. Uh, Councilman Bryant, you and Mayor Pro Tem kind of had a tie, so I'm gonna give you both the opportunity, but ladies first, so Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Actually, I was just going to pretty much say what um, Mr. Miller said, which is it's sad that we have to give up the service. However, it seems interesting that nobody has come forth to discuss it on the, the None community. of the public outreach as well as the two public hearings, that's correct. Councilman Bryant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Definitely with a heavy heart that we uh, this action is even proposed, but also with uh, fiscal solvency of the city in mind and uh, our duty to the taxpayer. So uh, definitely with a heavy heart, but it's a necessary move. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Cryer. It just makes sense. Um, it's something we have to do. All right. I have no comments. So I have a motion and a second. May we have a roll call, please? Council Member Miller. Yes. Council Member Cryer? Yes. Council Member Bryant? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hill? Yes. And Mayor Knorr? 
Yes, uh, passed on a 5 0 vote. Thank you. Next up, item number two public hearing California Department of Housing and Community Development Annual Progress Reporting. City Manager Jones. Thank you, Mayor. California Government Code Section 65400 requires each governing body, city council, or board of super supervisors to prepare an annual progress report on the status and progress in implementing the jurisdiction's housing element and general plan using forms, definitions adopted by Department of Housing and Community Development. Housing element reports are due for each county year on the following April 1st and must be sent to HCD in the Governor's Office of Planning and Research. Thank you very much, sir. At this time, we're going to conduct a public hearing or receive comments on this. Anybody wishing to speak on behalf or in opposition to this matter, please step forward. Seeing none, we're going to close the public comments. We will review and accept the annual housing element progress report for the 2017 calendar year. I mean, discussion on this matter. Do we vote, Mr. Yes. Jefferson? I'm sorry? Do we vote? Yes. I would open the floor for discussion. Any discussion on the matter? No Do comment. None? Do we make a motion? I haven't heard a motion yet. So moved. Well, it doesn't say to make a motion, no, so... It says review and accept. Review and accept. However, we'll... I'll make, I'll make a motion that we review and accept the House and Element Report for 2017. Second. And we have a second. So we have a motion and a second. We have no additional discussion. Sir. And we have a roll call, please. Council Member Miller? Yes. Council Member Cryer? Yes. Council Member Bryant? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hill? Yes. And Mayor Knorr? Yes. Not passed on a 5 0 vote. Thank you very much. Item number three is public hearing Governor's Office of Planning and Research General Plan Annual Progress Reporting for 2017. City Manager Joan. Thank you, Mayor. California Government Code Section 65400 requires each governing body to prepare an annual progress report on the status and progress in implementing the jurisdiction's general plan to the Governor's Office of Planning and Research, which are due in each calendar year on April 1st as well. All right. Thank you very much. So at this time, we'd be willing to receive comments on behalf of or in opposition to the general plan annual progress report. Doesn't look like anybody wants to. We're going to close that up. At this time, I would entertain a motion to review and accept the general plan annual progress report for the 2017 calendar year. Motion. Second. A motion and a second discussion. No, sir. None. Councilman? None. No None. Comment. All right. We have a motion second. May we have roll call, please? Council Member Miller? Yes. Council Member Cryer? Yes. Council Member Bryant? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hill? Yes. And Mayor Knorr? Yes. And that passes on a 5 0 vote. I, I believe. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right. Next up. Citizens request public comments. This is the time and place for the general public to address the city council on matters within its jurisdiction. State law prohibits the council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. Council may receive comment and set the matter for a subsequent meeting. Please limit your comments to five minutes. First up, Heather Mueller. If you would, when you step up to the podium, state your name and uh, just tell us whether or not you reside within the city of Taft. Yes, okay, thank you, Mayor Nor. I am Heather Mueller and I live at 508 Woodrow. All right. And um, what, I, what I wanna do tonight is thank you, first of all, for, shall we say, moving ahead with the agenda and the thought and the discussion with regard to the homeless folks in Taft. And I understand that it's gonna be on the agenda next meeting, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so what I'd like to do is, is offer in any way that I can um, information, ideas, there, of course, as I'm sure you well know, there are many cities that are dealing with similar issues 
and there are many cities that have come up with some, I think, pretty creative ideas. And I think Taft could do some of these um, some of these solutions. So I believe that they are there for us. So I guess what I'm really saying is, if I can help in any way. I've read a lot about it. I know a lot of clergy who have dealt with the homeless issues throughout the country, throughout California. And some things work, some things don't work. Um, but there are some ways that we can help some of these folks. And I'd like to say another thing, too, that um, for the last two nights I've been taking a poll. and. I've specifically asked the people who have come to eat at St. Andrews, um, so how long have you lived in Taft? And I think probably, and I didn't write these figures down, but I believe that at least a third or possibly a half of the people have responded with, I was born here. And the other half of the, not one single person has been bused here from any place. And, and this has been a two-night <laughs> survey. Mm -hmm. So the, the lowest number of years that someone has lived in Taft is 23 years. And it ranged from there up to 40, 45, and then, of course, the people that have been born here. So one of the things that's been circulating around is that people are being bused to Taft. Um, and I can't imagine that they're coming here for our meals. <laughs> you know, that's a little bit of a stretch. So, okay, there. that's what I wanted to say, and I would really like to be of some service. And I also know a number of other people who could be, I think, very helpful in this. I think that probably what we need to do is meet with David Couch. We need to get some money into this town. We need, you know, we've got a fabulous till program. We've got a wonderful, wonderful art program in this town. We're taking care of people. But we need, I believe, to look at some creative ways to take care of these people who are on the streets and mm -hmm. causing havoc. Well, thank you very so much for right volunteering your help. Uh, we appreciate that. And I'm sure you'll have ample opportunity to, to provide Good. that input and make a difference. Thank you. Might, thank you, Dave. Might I thank suggest you. that, Heather, you, you put uh, together some thoughts and some ideas, ideas and mimeograph okay. and, or copy? I would be happy to do and, that. And at the meeting, maybe you can just yeah. spur some more, um, give them to City Hall, give them to our city clerk, and she can make sure the council gets them before for the meeting, if that's I'd who you're happy. intending. I'd be happy to, Randy. That would be very yeah. good. Councilman Bembers. Give us some ideas to uh, yes. yeah, work on. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up, Sandra Downey. Good evening. Good evening. Sandra Downey, I do live in the city. Um, I want to come talk about the movie industry. Uh, recently, we've had a lot of activity, which I know it's good for the town. But when the guys come around and say, hey, we're going to shoot from this time to this time, we sign the paper, you know, but that's not what happens. You know, they're taking up the streets, taking up the side roads, um, blocking parking, blocking businesses, not in the hours of which are posted on the papers. I understand they're bringing their trucks in earlier. Well, then they need to put that on this, their permit for the city and tell the businesses exactly when they're going to come and when they're going to be done. Um, we had, uh, I called the city, we had their people trying to run us my customers off the street at four o'clock when they weren't supposed to be leaving till 5.30 and got into some pretty heated arguments. Um, so I would just ask that the city take that in consideration to try and maybe ask them, hey, when you bring your vehicles, you know, where are you gonna park them? Are you taking up business parking, you know, et cetera. So. All right, very good. Well, okay. thank you very much for coming before the, the council. Thanks. Uh, next up, and I'm sorry, I cannot read your first name, Baker. Susie. Susie Baker. Yep. 
I beg your pardon. I live at 909 Arroyo Way, and <clears throat> this is a letter from Trixie Hodges. She spoke to you last time, and she couldn't be here tonight, so she asked if it would be okay if I read a letter, if you'd let me yes, do that. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Okay. And she lives at 217 East Santa Medio. All right, thank you. <clears throat> to the city of Taft, my name is Trixie Hodges, and I am a person who has been homeless and rehabilitated. Through my experience of being homeless, was my choice, though my, exper my experience of being homeless was my choice, because I did not want to quit using drugs and alcohol. Therefore, I would not go to a program. I just lived off the system of people and places that would enable me. I stayed in my self-destructive ways from the time I was 13 to 28 because of the people who made it easy for me. If we do not help fix the so-called homeless problem, our town will be destroyed and no one will want to purchase a home here. When they drive in and see people living wherever they want, littering and defecating wherever they'd like, letting these people live this way is an injustice to our town and to those people destroying it. The Bible says, if a man doesn't work, he should not eat. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 these people need to be accountable or they will stay in the self-destructive ways. Programs that can help them, like Teen Challenge, Bethany Center, and the Dream Center, are places that are set up to retrain them so they can feel good about themselves. We do not need a homeless shelter here. That will just allow most to stay the way they are till they die. Let's do better for them and for our community. Well, thank you very much for coming forward. <clears throat> All right, that's it for public comments this evening. Next up, council statements, non-action. I'll begin with you, Councilman Cryer. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I had an opportunity to go to the Board of Supervisors this morning to speak about um, redistricting, redistricting uh, Kern County, and the way it's being drawn right now is that we may be put in with uh, Delano, Wasco, Shafter, Lost Hills, and Taft. And um, I asked the Board of Supervisors that can they have the meetings in open session or the Sunshine Act so that we all can see what, how the map's being drawn and have some input in it or hear about it. As, uh, I liked uh, David would, Couch would not be our supervisor no more, the way it's drawn. And so it would be a brand new uh, district there. And with the population of Delano being over 50,000 people, uh, we would not have a, a, a very good voice. And uh, that was our concern I had, and I expressed it uh, to the supervisors. And, uh, and afterwards, uh, the California came up to me and asked me a few questions, which I answered. And, and a comment I had, they had with me was, if, if there is, David, don't have a, a, our councilman no more, uh, what do you think Taft will do? And I said, well, if, if that happens, I said, I may throw my hat in the ring. Basically, more of just a tongue-in-cheek type deal because uh, I, I want Taft to uh, be represented in bars because we're a oil town. We're not uh, actually uh, any semblance with Delano or Wasco because they have whole different um, uh, growth pattern or not, nothing related to our area and David knows our situation a lot better and he gets along with you know with the the Hispanics and he gets along with us and he has a great rapport he does tap a lot of good things in Taft uh, and he lost the first election in Taft when he ran for first time but he won the election overall but he lost it yeah and the second go around he beat with over about 80% of the votes, approximately 80% of the votes, it tells me that everybody here likes what he's doing and they're very happy with him and want to continue with it. So that's kind of basically what I did, uh, what I spoke at there, that to represent Taft, that we, we like David, we like our boundaries the way they are, we don't want to see any changes. And we will know next week, they're talking about having a um, an open forum possibility. <clears throat> and when I left, they wasn't decided yet, but David's going to let me know that maybe we have a meeting that anybody would like to go to it and have a voice of opinion where they want to be at and what they want to do, you know, and have their voice heard and see how the map being drawn. And right now there's some political stuff going on that has some people concerned, and myself included. So um, 
if you want to, to have Taft stay the same, we need to uh, support David. That's all I have to say. All right. Thank you very much. Councilman Miller. Well, let's kind of carry on that. Um, we elect people. And I, I would hope the people who elected this council elected us because they thought we were qualified to do the job and that we uh, would make the commitment to represent of all the citizens of Taft and not a certain uh, race, color, or creed, or whatever. And so if the matter is going to be split up uh, into new districts, uh, I would hope that whoever runs would run to represent all the people in that district and not just a certain population. And that's not that's not what we do or not what you do when you, you get on a council. Uh, there's a lot of issues and a lot of problems um, that this council faces all the time. There, there are people who run for office because they're mad about something. And then the, when they, they get on a council or, or a district or wherever, <laughs> schools, they realize that there's about 50 other things that they have to deal with beside that one issue that they had a problem with. And and so you want to elect people who are qualified, and that's what I would hope that would come out of this. If, if the Hispanic community, community has people that are out there that want to serve, they need to serve all the people, and that's uh, part of the deal. Um, I appreciate the letter, Susie, that uh, you wrote about this woman. But I'm just thinking, you know, it's starting to rain, and we're supposed to have a, uh, a pretty good uh, amount of rain in the next couple of days. Think about if you were homeless right now, where would you go? I know, I know. I, I, you represented the, the, the person that wrote that letter. But if, if we were homeless right now, where would we go to get out of the rain? And that's, that's an issue. I don't know where I would go, but there are people out there right now looking for a dry place to be and, and try to get warm. And, and sometimes uh, out of necessity, they break into homes or crawl under houses or do this or do that. So uh, I, I just, it's, it's a terrible situation, but I, I do have empathy for, for those folks that are out on the street. What, what would I do if I was, I, I, I don't know at, at this point, but it's a matter of survival. Um, and then the, the lady that wrote the letter that Mrs. Baker, I mean, <laughs> Susie, uh, uh, read, uh, she used the terms, the town will be destroyed. Um, I, I just well, read a lot about that on uh, people who are angry or whatever on uh, uh, social media. Taft's not going to be destroyed. We're not, the people who live here and love Taft, and have lived here all their lives are not going to allow the town to be destroyed. So it's a matter of how you use words. And, you know, I, I, I write a column every couple of weeks for the local newspapers. <clears throat> and I've always said it's, it's about words and words you use and how you use words. So uh, it just puts my hair up on the back of my neck uh, when I hear somebody write about... Uh, Town being destroyed, or town and Taft's going downhill, or Taft this, or Taft that. I'm, I'm sorry, Susie. Uh, public comments over. So, uh, but I, I just uh, just those kinds of words uh, uh, that other people use, not just this particular woman. Uh, we got to remain positive. We're going to work on this, like every other community is working on this problem, and uh, hope we will have some good results. Thank you much, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Councilman Bryant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had a great pleasure of, uh, I sat back for just a second, uh, not to downplay the very serious items that these gentlemen talked about that have some very valid points, and I agree with them in many respects. But I want to speak on a little bit higher, more rosy note. I had the great pleasure uh, due to the actions of this council at the previous meeting in allowing the parade in the downtown this past Saturday on behalf of West Side Little League. We had over 1,000 people in attendance. Lining the streets of the downtown, four or five hundred kids, kids who were able to have some, some light shine upon them and some focus, and they really, really enjoyed it. And, and I look at that from two perspectives. Obviously, that's what I want to do. I want those kids to have a great time. I want them to enjoy it. I want the sponsors to get some recognition for their investment, uh, their dollars, those hard, precious earned dollars in those kids and into the program. But then I put my council member hat on, and those are butts 
in the downtown, feet walking the downtown that may or may not ever go down there otherwise. They might walk into somebody's store and buy something. They might walk into somebody's restaurant and buy coffee or breakfast or something like that. So it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity. And what I wanted to do is say thank you to the council for uh, uh, supporting that and your actions during the last meeting. I very, very much appreciate it on behalf of myself and on behalf of the West Side Little League. But um, I hope everybody enjoyed it and hope this thing continues to get bigger and bigger. And I hope that it continues to bring some semblance of prosperity to the downtown. Um, speaking of the downtown, we had the great pleasure of dealing with our uh, sitting in on an economic development committee meeting last week. Uh, and people look at doom and gloom about what's happening in the city of Taft. But I, I promise you this, there are some fantastic things on the horizon, some in the very, very near future. Uh, I believe it was Council Member Miller or um, I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Oren. Taft's not dead. Taft's not dying. We're evolving. We're learning. We're changing. But we are evolving and we're going in a better direction. Sure, there's going to be some lumps in the road. We've got staff here who are willing and able to take on the challenge. We've got a police department who's willing and able to take on the challenge. And they've got a lot of volunteers who are willing to support them. And in regard to volunteerism, I spoke, or actually it was part of the meeting last night with the city's volunteer, uh, citizen volunteer unit. I want to take the opportunity to thank the new chief for his uh, unabashed support of the program. Sergeant Bilby for heading it up. Uh, you couldn't have a more uh, engaged and honest, uh, upbeat person to head that up. Uh, and to not only under let folks uh, as volunteers understand our purpose, but to show us that there, there's more than just going out there and being extra eyes on the streets. It's an opportunity to be an extension and an add-on to city staff and to the taxpayer. So I uh, I want folks to know that the volunteers are going to be a great asset for folks like Reverend Mueller and the Homeless Collaborative. Uh, and I don't want to speak too much on behalf of uh, Sergeant Bilby, but I would like to offer myself as a conduit to him as the head of the volunteer unit or feel free to reach out to him in that regard uh, because we spoke specifically last night about being uh, a conduit for folks who may be up against their wall, folks who may need some other help, or just being extra eyes on the streets for folks who are up to no good. I think it's very important that we make a differentiation between the folks who are legitimately homeless, folks who are vagrant, and the folks who are drug addicts not in jail. Under Prop 47, 57, 36, and AB 109, you have, the fact of the matter is, we have more criminals on our streets today than we did three or four years ago. Those people are not going to jail, and they're not going to jail anytime soon for the crimes they used to commit and go spend time in county or state. So we have to do more individually as business owners, as citizens, and whatever we can as volunteers. And I stand here right now saying, uh, I don't have money, so I'm putting my time and effort behind me or where, where my mouth is. We have to do more in that regard to supplement what we, what city staff can do, what the police department can do, because they're at their wits end and we need to be an extension of them. And uh, I look forward to doing that very, very much. And, uh, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mayor Pro Tem Hill. Thank you. I, I want to go back to what I said a couple of weeks ago. There is a very large difference between homeless and vagrants, as Mr. Bryant touched upon. A homeless person is not necessarily a bad person. They are just a person who does not, often does not have a home. They can be living in you know, supervised facilities. Some have jobs. Some are trying very hard to get back on their feet. I don't think there's anybody in this room that doesn't feel compassion for that person. However, vagrants is a criminal act. A vagrant is a person who does not work, does not choose to work, who can work, and lives off the system. That is the person that I think we need to remember there is a difference. So when we speak of this, let's speak of vagrants and homeless. As a community, we need to be very diligent as to what we are seeing. As Mr. Bryant said, we have to help the police department see things. Today, one of the business owners on the 400 block of Center Street came and asked me for a ladder. I didn't think it was appropriate her age to be up on a ladder to get a mattress off of the top of her roof. So thank you for city work. City Public Works came down and took it off. They also took off numerous personal items, including a fire pit to cook off of. Can you imagine? Oh, on the roof? Can, can you, on the roof of a building on the 400 block of Center Street? Just so you know, if that building had gone, there's a real good chance that all the buildings on the 400 block of Center Street had gone. That particular building housed many original Maggie Blackwell paintings. So I, I just think that when you see something that doesn't look right, like a mattress on top of a building, call the city, call the police. You don't know what's up there. If you see somebody on a roof of one of these buildings at night, please call the police. Oddly enough, it would, be the, it would be the building owner who would be liable because somebody would fall through the roof and sue them. 
but there is no good about being up on a roof. So if you see somebody up on a roof, call the police. You know, we, we, we need to help the police see these things. So I, I just want to continue to remind people that there's a huge difference between homeless and vagrants. One other thing, there was a vagrant, and I will say that by the way he looked and the way he acted, who was walking down Center Street, asked somebody at one of the restaurants for some money, I assume, because the guy got up, went to his car, gave the man some change. He sat back down at the restaurant, and the guy's walking down the street complaining because he only got change. That was a lot of help. It was quite obvious he was probably 30-ish years old. He looked like an able-bodied man, but he decided he didn't want to work. So I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of compassion for that particular person. So I think in the future, as we talk about this, and we're going to be talking about this a lot, let's continue to separate homelessness and need from vagrants. That's all I have here. All right. Common thread here this evening, it would seem, and obviously we've talked about this, just to reiterate, uh, this is a problem throughout not just the state of California to, throughout the country, but the state of California through some really bad legislation has exacerbated this problem. And there are many people out there, the wholesale disregard of the law does not mean it's okay now. If enough people break the law, then that doesn't mean automatically, well, it's no longer a crime. That is incorrect. Any crime against honest, hardworking people who respect other people's rights is a crime, all right? So I do not check off or sign off on that because of somebody's situation. Criminal acts are criminal acts. The city of Taft, the people up here, our police department is out there to protect and serve, and that is what they will do. Situational awareness is very, very critical. So just like Mayor Pro Tem just said, if you see something that looks wrong, then make that phone call. That very well could have turned into a fire on the roof, which could have spread and burned up a city block and killed people, all because of somebody's careless act. And that's not the only time. There have been multiple buildings burned in this community because of vagrants. And it won't be the last time, unfortunately. So there's a difference. But no matter what, a criminal act, in my mind, is a criminal act. And it should not go unpunished. Because we should not punish the taxpayers because of bad legislation. And we have been for a while. So that's all I have. All right, moving forward. Planning Commission report. Do we have planning commission report this evening? Good evening, Mayor Noor, Pro Tem Mayor Hill, and Councilman. Um, at our meeting, we uh, recommended the city uh, council accept the annual housing progress report, which you have as well as the governor's office planning and research the general plan for the annual progress report again and you've approved that as well we uh, went ahead and took the um, city of taft municipal service review update discussions and put it for further uh future for in the future to discuss and um we also discussed about um being proud of taft Putting together some kind of a beautification project to make, you know, a smile is contagious to make loving your city of Taft and beautifying, helping someone clean up their yard, things like that, that we'd like to work on in the future. Uh, we also would like to, uh, or I'd like to take the opportunity to remind everyone about the city, uh, the grand opening of the transit center this Thursday at four o'clock, as well as the state of the union luncheon at noon on April 5th and um, we want to wish the city of Taft, the council and everyone a happy Easter. All right. Thank you very much. What a very positive message. <clears throat> department reports. We have any department reports this evening. Mr. Staples has something from the planning department. Uh, thank you, Mark Staples, planning director for the city. And I apologize for not giving you a heads up that I was going to speak this evening, but one item was going to be uh, this Thursday's uh, grand opening of the Taft Transit Center. Um, we've dotted every I, crossed every T, and uh, get ready to open those doors. The transit folks are moved in. 
Um, so we're ready for everybody to check it out. It's this Thursday, March 22nd at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, we've invited folks from the city, uh, the Kern Cog reps that were kind enough to uh, assist our city manager and public uh, works director for the grant that got us going on the project. Um, we should have some reps from our uh, local government representatives. So um, it should be a, a good time there and hope everybody gets to check out the building and see uh, uh, what we've uh, put up there. Um, the other thing as well was, uh, um, I'm blanking on it, I apologize. Oh, a um, number of months ago uh, regarding uh, some work that I believe Councilman Bryant was referring to, uh, the Community Planning Assistance Team uh, program, which is offered by the National American Planning Association, which is a, uh, um, a technical assistance program where you just have to cover um, essentially uh, uh, meals and incidentals and room and board for professional planners to come and uh, provide a, uh, um, a service to the community of uh, research, uh, determining a vision, design ideas, and uh, we're uh, pitching the entire downtown specific plan to this uh, group. Um, and they've responded and it looks like we'll be refining it to Center Street because it is a uh, kind of a quick process in um, uh, going through this process. So it, it, it isn't intended to get us the specific plan. We will be coming back with a consultant to take that information and turn it into the eventual specific plan for Center Street and beyond. But I've gotten a good feedback from the American Planning Association. I should be getting something in the next couple of weeks to uh, report back to you for uh, what our eventual schedule will be to get this team out. So just expect a uh, kind of a blitz week of uh, meetings and uh, workshops and things. So next month or so? I mean, it's we, probably two we or three it? months because um, they'll need the uh, planning volunteers first. I'll need to have uh, phone conferences with them. Hopefully we get mostly California folks so they're local and they understand the state and processes. <laughs> and uh, um, I'll be getting them all the materials they need from our general plan and zoning and all that. And um, they'll have to learn a, no, a new city all over again without really being our consultant in a sense. Um, so there's some prep time to that and then it's a full week uh, of uh, activity. So I'm, I'm guessing since we're in March, at least two months, so we're looking at May, um, maybe right before or right after the Memorial Weekend holiday or so. And then there's two or three months for them to prep a final document that I'll bring before you so we could take a look, look at it all together and then identify our next steps and uh, um, update in the specific plan. All right. Very good. Moving right. forward. Cool, Thank sir. you for the work, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. We have any other department reports this evening? None. All right. Next up, city manager statements. City manager Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple things. Um, we just want to remind everybody that staff is still um, monitoring the PACE programs. Uh, we haven't forgot about that. We are uh, keeping our eyes and ears open of any problems or any complaints. We haven't had any since our meetings, which were well attended by both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been some uh, legislative changes to do with that program. I believe they're in effect now. So just wanted to let you guys know that we're still paying attention to that. And on a, uh, another note, <clears throat> it was requested for staff to review and bring forward some ordinances um, dealing with some of the issues that we've been talking about and some other issues. Um, just, I guess, asking for some patience. We're going to bring some of those forward slowly as we uh, go through them and um, make them work for our city and the city attorney, the city clerk, myself, and code enforcement and the police department are kind of working together to try to um, not reinvent the wheel, but if we have to change things and make them work for our community, that's what we're doing. So you'll see those trickle through slowly. Some of them will be worked on at the planning department level, depending on what they are. Um, so, and the fines, we're gonna be bringing forth, uh, changing some of the fines that haven't been updated since the 50s, you know. <laughs> $12 fines for stuff really isn't a deterrent, and plus it doesn't cover staff time to do the paperwork, so. Um, just those things. So just wanted to update you on those, and that's all I have tonight. Thank you very much, sir. <clears throat> Next up, city attorney statements. Mr. Epperson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No statement. No statement. All right. Future agenda requests. Any council member have any future agenda requests? I do. Um, 
I would like, I, I realize that we're going to be trickling down some of these ordinances. Uh, some of these ordinances will be on the next agenda, correct? Mm. Not ordinances. No. No. Some of the reviewing of them will be? They have to go through the planning commission first, some of them, so they'll be on their way here. So uh, we'll but you will have some resolutions okay. that will be updating fees because that is done by resolution, therefore it doesn't have to go through the same process. Okay. Um, so at some point we will be able to bring some of those to council so that mm -hmm. we can discuss them. And we can discuss them, you know, what they, what they are and how they're going to work and how they're going to be enforced. When they go through the public hearing process, that'll that'll be the time to... Okay. Also, is is it possible for us in one of our near meetings to have a more comprehensive list of what city services that we do have? What, what kind of services do we have in the city for people who have homeless issues, vagrant problems, whichever? Um, possibly get Bakersfield Mission over there. If we can't get people to come here, maybe we can get more comprehensive lists of what we have. So we... We actually, as a community, know what we can, what we have. So, if a police officer happens to be talking to a homeless person and they need services, they will have access to those services, and we will have an understanding of what those services are. Okay. Is that something doable. Well, um, I do believe that the plan, and, and I'm just going to expand on that because, after all, what we're talking about here is agenda requests. Right. So. I think that is a part of the process as things make their way through the committees, through uh, the code enforcement, through the uh, police department, and then finally after the public hearings make their way here. If what you're asking for is a specific agenda request, which would be a list of current services available on the west side. Is that your is that yes. your request? So we actually understand where do we have services, and if we have services that Bakersfield will provide for our population if it's needed, and how we might get people there if they are needed to be. That's well, more of a list here. than a general request. Well, I mean, you know, right. if we Mayor Pro Tem Hill, I think. Uh, are you asking for uh, perhaps an informational item? To well, be for added example, to the you know, if maybe we can get the Bakersfield Mission to come over here and talk about their mm -hmm. services, you know, a workshop. Where we're not talking you know, more of a workshop type of a situation, mm -hmm. so we have an understanding of what we have. Because frankly, I, do, I having been a person who doesn't use these services, I don't know exactly what services we do have available. I'm sure a lot of other people don't either. Mm -hmm. But if we have an understanding of the fact that we have ABC, we know that those are all the services we have and that perhaps Bakersfield has certain services that people here can get to, and maybe we'll have a better understanding of what we have. So this is an information item. Well, <clears throat> so we're, we're having an agenda item, I assume, in the next council meeting, at the first of I don't know if we'll have that list. It won't be ready. And that's, just or, that, that's just basically just what I had requested before, was to discuss the ordinances that we already have in place and fine-tune what needs to be fine-tuned and find out what we can and can't enforce. But meanwhile, if there's actually a person who legitimately needs services because they're homeless and they want to be helped, what do we have in this city to provide for them? I don't know. I That's, mean, that would be part of a part of a staff report. So you're you're staff asking important informational item. Yes. All right. Very yes. good. Then. So we're right. assuming staff's going to have some input on the item well, that's I, going I will to be coming up. I have discussed this recently with the police chief, and. They're working on this very thing. I don't know if we're going to have a list by next council meeting. We didn't. We didn't have that by next council. Well, meeting. I mean, at some point, the thing is, well, you know, we've we got as, one posted out the need center. As we can, you know, different the, services. But for example, oh, I mean, the need yeah, center is a perfect example. I'm this. sorry. This, we might be again. We might be getting a little close to actually discussing an issue okay. that's not that we're not agendized for. Well, so the, I think the request would be to add this to the next agenda or a future agenda for information and perhaps a workshop regarding uh, this type of issue, if there's concurrence on that. I'm sorry. Or that, that, is what, that is exactly what I'm saying. Or understand. under staff statements for the yes. next agenda item, we can, what we have at that time. Okay. Well, okay. I, I would concur with that. All right, so we have a request and a concurrence. Is, is that clear uh, regarding the, the request? <laughs> yes. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Are there any other... <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other agenda requests? Hearing none? All right, we'll move forward then. <clears throat> Next up is the consent calendar items 11 through 16. All items listed on the consent calendar shall be considered routine and will be enacted by one roll call vote. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the city council requests specific items to be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. 
Any item removed from the consent calendar will be considered after the regular business items. Are there any items on the consent calendar that any member of the public would like to comment on? Seeing none, those items are item number 11, the minutes for the March 6th, 2018 regular meeting. Item number 12, the payment of bills, about $270,000 worth. Item number 13, zoning ordinance amendment number 2018-03, medical and adult use cannabis regulation and safety minor amendment. The recommendation is a motion to approve and amend the city of Taft municipal code entitled an ordinance of the city council of the city of Taft approving zoning ordinance amendment number 2018-03 a mi minor amendment to chapters 4, 5, 6, 7, and sections 6, 4, 5, and 6, 12, 31 of Title VI, Zoning Regulations of the Taft Municipal Code, revising license types, terminology, definitions, descriptions, and enforcement to be consistent with emergency regulations published by the Bureau of Cannabis Control with all commercial cannabis activity prohibited in the city of Taft. Item 14 would be the National Walking Day. Recommendation is a motion to approve allowing available employees to participate in the walk on rails to trails as part of the National Walking Day. Item 15, waiver of fees for the use of the Oil Dorado Room for the Taft Union High School Prom. Motions to approve waiver of fees for the use of the Oil Dorado Room on April the 28th, 2018 for the Taft Union High School Prom. And then finally, item 16, professional services agreement with IWORQ systems for permit software. Recommendation is a motion to approve a professional services agreement with IWORQ or IWORK, I would guess, systems to set up the city of Taft permit tracking software in an amount not to exceed $2,650. Any council member wish to remove any of these items from the consent calendar? I would like to remove item 15, please. Item 15. All right, at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve consent calendar items 11, 12, 13, 14, and 16. Motion. motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. May we have a roll call, please? Council Member Miller? Yes. Council Member Cryer? Yes. Council Member Bryant? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hill? Yes. And Mayor Knorr? Yes. That's approved on a 5 0 vote. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Item number 15 waiver of fees for use of the Oil Dorado Room for the Taft Union High School prom. City Manager Jones? One moment, Mr. Mayor. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, if I can interrupt because of conflict of interest, I'd like to recuse myself from discussion and. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. We'll give you a moment. Thank you, Mayor. The junior class of Taft Union High School is planning their 2018 <coughs> prom with the theme of Derricks and Diamonds. They are requesting waiver of facility rental fees for the prom on April 28, 2018. The high school district has provided a certificate of liability coverage, naming the city of Taft as additional insured, and will work with the city and allied agency staff for necessary security during the event and post-event uh, post cleanups. All right. Thank you very much. Councilman Miller, you asked that this item be yes, removed from the I, consent I would, calendar. When this came on uh, the agenda, I <clears throat> looked on the website. I, I don't see anywhere on the website our fee structure. Uh, and do we have a fee structure we, for the oil or oil? Working on the fee structure, the reason why it's so complicated is because so many different types of events go on. Insurances from the RMA dealing with alcohol, um, people requesting setup the day before, the staff time. So it's a little more complicated than just saying it's X amount for the room and come down and sign up and because people want to use it for weddings with alcohol, alcohol for sales sometimes, and it's, and it's a city-owned property, so we have to make sure that in this day and age that we're insured if something were to happen down there. So we have gotten some, um, some language from the RMA. We've gotten some suggestions on how to handle that, and we are working through those. We're also working, trying to work through the staffing of the rental area for cleanup and such to make sure the city is recouping money but not being so expensive that it would not be 
worthwhile for anyone to have, say, a two-hour birthday party for a thousand bucks. Yeah. So we're trying to make make it make sense, but also where the city is not um, coming out of pocket. Anyway. Well, and the other issue is every organization is going to come and want a fee waiver. And uh, how are we? That's a policy. How are we going to structure and have a policy for that yeah. too? You know. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so I didn't understand, but I had heard some, some outlandish rates, and I said, well, I, I didn't think there was anything published yet, so uh, we have not we, yet. We, we are, to, to help out council policy, the staff is also looking into other government agency usage of the property. So there would be a set fee, so we wouldn't lose money for the staffing. So if you guys waived the fee, it would, it would still require a small fee. From another government agency, like a school or someone. So, else. And, and part of this agreement with the uh, prom committee is they leave it like they found it. Leave it like they found. It. Or what's is there a penalty? That would be in the conditions of approval that you could approve tonight in your uh, on your uh, motion. Okay. So if you guys wanted to say be whatever, but we want a thousand dollar cleaning fee deposit, we can do that. Okay. The main thing is. I guess they have a fund that they have to have these prom, the prom out of, and obviously if they can save money on rental fees, that's a little larger, nicer event. They can right, have. but on the other hand, you know, we have our our issues too. If they tear um, up, clean up, something staff time, set up, yeah. tear down, all that kind of thing. Okay. All right, so I, I just wanted to make it clarified and, and the folks that, that we haven't got all put together yet. But in this particular case, we, we're waiving the... Come to find out, we've tried to we've discussed with some other agencies that have similar rental properties. They all have, yeah, we need to revamp ours because they have all kinds of problems. So we're yeah. trying to eliminate the problems, especially especially security. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you very much. So that we can move forward, especially with conditions of the motion at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the waiver of fees for the use of the old Dorado Room on April 28, 2018, for the Taft Union High School prom. Motion. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Mayor Pro Tim Hill. I would assume that we are not going to have any major problems with the high school. I mean, obviously, if we have some cleanup issues, we pretty much know who to call it have it fixed but I mean we might want to discuss some kind of security deposit in case something is damaged Councilman Miller you had a second uh, no further discussion all right Councilman Cryer no, no comment I would suggest that there be language in this that first and foremost is going to be insurance we have to indemnify the city and hold harmless and all that type of insurance language which you're keenly familiar with secondly whether it's a cleaning deposit and if any damage or necessary cleaning by staff exceeds the deposit they're going to be on the hook for that so whether we as a part of that after all we know where taft high school is uh, tell them that if it is not left clean and accepted in its condition, then city staff will have to clean it to that level and they will be charged exactly what it costs the taxpayers to return it to the same condition it was in when they when they took it over. Right now we're using a permit that has that, not that language in it, but the indemnification, all that, but we can type in the bottom condition of approval uh, that they agree that if we have to spend any staff time that they'd have to reimburse. Should there be any damage or any additional cleanup necessary, then they will be financially responsible. I mean, the good thing on the damage, if it's any large damage, we can always go after the insurance. Okay. As long as it's as long as it's in the language. It needs to be clear. They need to understand. All right? Everybody's got to know the rules if they're going to play by the rules. Might make clear to the public that... Uh, Councilman Bryant stepped down because he is an employee of the of the high school and works in the business office. So. All right, thank you very much. So um, you made the motion and you made the second. Would you care to amend that motion, including the proposed language? I would like to amend that that motion, including the language that you spoke. How's that? All right. I second that okay. amendment. All right. So we have a motion and a second. May we have a roll call, please? 
Council Member Miller? Yes. Council Member Cryer? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Hill? Yes. And Mayor Knorr? Yes. And that passes on 4 0 with Councilman Bryant having to abstain and step down. Uh, at this time, we'll end our open session. We will be going into closed session for two items on the closed session agenda. Item A, conference with labor negotiator Craig Jones, city manager, government code 54957.6, all units. And item B, conference with real property negotiator Craig Jones, city manager, government code section 54956.8, APN number 032-110-30 and 4312 Trumbull Drive, Bakersfield, California, 93311. Thank you for being a part of this evening's meeting. Thank you.